So today is the last call for the Mayara Launchpad Lottery Ticket Buying. And before we go through what is happening and what you need to do and what is coming next in the listing of Ashlap, I want to talk a bit about Benny Minku's last podcast on uh, Upgrade 100 or Radio Guerrilla or whatever we want to call it. The host is the same. Now, I have to admit I didn't watch it till the end. I didn't even watch it uh, through halfway, let's say. And it was because of the host. I am just offended by his behavior for first. And my opinion is that it doesn't matter how popular you are, how a big radio you are hosting, you shouldn't. You shouldn't uh, talk like that. You shouldn't be that bored. You shouldn't be that arrogant with, uh, with somebody who is really trying to do something, who is the CEO of a very big company. And I think uh, Aaron is becoming one of the biggest companies uh, from Romania. I think he still has the illusion that they are talking for the first time when uh, Benny is just trying to prove or explain what they are going to do in the cryptoverse, which probably is like a dream works or a dream ecosystem or illusion for many people. Now, there is no problem with that. But if you are hosting a podcast with a person who has almost 500,000 followers on Twitter, and the new team member who is going to be the product owner in that company or in that project, well, you should show some damn respect, to be honest. Because there are so many good YouTubers, podcast hosts, who would give one of their arm to have Benny Minku on their show for an interview, at least for 30 minutes, not even two hours. What I'm most angry about, and that was the first, first thing or the first moment when I said that, I'm not going to watch this. On some of these, um, the most important verticals, um, but then also take a look at the future and what's coming. Let's take a short commercial break and also do... It seems to me that he had something else to say because, uh, yeah, this short commercial break, uh, I think it wasn't that important. Here they said that there was a problem with the technical problem which they need to solve. But I think that he could have left Benny just to finish his sentence. Now, I'm not going to get, uh, you know, picked on stuff like uh, if they hold it in English and they are expecting to have a lot of English listeners or viewers, they could just <laughs> write this stuff in English as well, because this is usually it's in the streaming software, you know, and you can just write it like a text. It doesn't really matter. What really annoyed me is how this host behaves usually. And you can say that, yes, because uh, it was had in English and probably, uh, I don't know, he was nervous or stuff like that because this was the first in English. Uh, well, I have to say, I don't know if this was his first English uh, interview. Probably not. As you guys know, I also speak Romanian. I watch all the Romanian interviews, which uh, Benny goes to or, or, or has. And this guy, he behaves the same also when he speaks in his native language. So uh, yeah, it's his personality. But what I would recommend to Benjamin Minku, I don't know what is the business behind. I don't know what are the motivations, but I think uh, he deserves like a proper podcast. He deserves a host who doesn't interrupt him every time, you know, moderating a conversation and uh, talking down to somebody, not talking down to somebody because he didn't do that. Let's be fair here. But, uh, you know, behaving like you're not uh, falling asleep. Yeah, he deserves that. Okay, let's go forward because I'm just raging on you guys. Uh, I wanted to share my opinion. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think. Obviously, uh, maybe you liked the interview. I think it could have been much better. And uh, nevertheless, this didn't take away anything from, uh, from Benjamin, uh, how he answered and what answers he gave, at least those which I heard. Uh, and I'm not going to watch the rest. I'm, if I will have a chance once, I will ask my own questions. And uh, yeah. I will try to improve this hosting stuff. Let's go forward and uh, discuss AshSwap. This is the last call for the lottery buying event. You have to enter AshSwap. You have to connect your wallet. And uh, yeah, I'm going to connect and I'm going to connect my Myar wallet uh, because yeah, I, uh, I already have bought my tickets on with my uh, web wallet. But I'm just going to show you what you need to do here. Now, I don't have the KIC on this wallet, so I'm not going to be able to actually buy the tickets, but it is very straightforward. It is, um, yeah, as you can see, you are not eligible to buy tickets, obviously, because my KIC was not accepted. It wasn't even started. So uh, today, in 4 hours and 34 minutes, by the time this video goes out, probably like 3 hours uh, only, uh, the lottery buying ticket event ends and everybody 
uh, we'll find out whether they won or not lottery tickets uh, today after 17 p.m. UTC. So uh, I don't know if you are if you are in, in England, for example, that's uh, 18, so 6 p.m. Okay, now after you had the results and I don't know, you won two tickets out of eight, 16, 34, 64, I don't know, then uh, you will get your tickets and you will get back the rest of the errand you used to buy lottery tickets because this is a no-lose uh, lottery, so you will get everything back. And I want to make just one small remark on the errand price as well. Because usually what happens is that after the lottery ticket buying event uh, ended and everybody got back their lottery tickets, well, the price goes a bit down because uh, people who just bought Aaron, you know, for, uh, for the lottery tickets, they will sell it back. Uh, it seems that the price didn't rally as much as uh, I was hoping for. This is probably because of the market conditions, maybe about the project, maybe the, the hype, but it seems that we had only 13%, which is still not bad, obviously, but it's not 60 or 50% as I prognosed or as I as I saw, as we saw in the previous uh, Launchpad projects. However, I'm very curious to see what will bring the next one, because probably the next project will also be in the, in the bear market. And I want to know what is the difference between a 50-60% rise and in a 30% rise. I would also like to add here that in the middle, in between here somewhere, Bitcoin also crashed because of the CPI number. So I would say that uh, the market wasn't in, uh, in Ashweb's favor at this time. However, we will see what will happen. We don't know yet. Now, obviously, after everybody claimed back their uh, winning tickets and non-winning errand, the price discovery starts for two days when everybody can say that, okay, I want to buy Ashswap or I want to sell my Ash tokens. After the price discovery, the swaps will be enabled and free, free uh, trading will be also enabled, I think, two days after. Because when you buy Ashswap or you sell Ashswap, in the first uh, five days, I think, then you will get locked tokens in order to avoid pump and dump. So you cannot just buy and then sell it right away because the price went up. Okay, this is obviously to avoid bots and to avoid manipulation or market manipulation by the big players. This was all for today. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one.